For many, the Sega Dreamcast remains the greatest game console of all time. Sega was at their creative peak with a never-ending stream of awesome new games. The console ushered in online gaming for many, and the graphical capabilities were a massive leap above the generation of systems before it. In addition to a true 480p resolution, the Dreamcast also raised the bar in terms of frame rate, with a ton of games featuring buttery smooth 60 frames per second polygon graphics. To celebrate these technical achievements, on today's episode of 5 Games, we are going to look at 5 more 60 frames per second games. First up is Crazy Taxi. If you had to sum up why folks still regard the Dreamcast as their system of choice after all these years, Crazy Taxi would be it. The gameplay is insanely simple. Select a cabbie, pick up a customer, then drop them off before time runs out. It's easy to pick up and play, but being a Sega game, the experience is actually much deeper. There are a number of different maneuvers to master, like drifting, boosting, and thrilling your passengers with near misses in traffic. The more proficient you get at the controls, the longer you'll be able to maintain a run before getting a game over. The presentation is also over the top. First and foremost, the high-energy licensed soundtrack from Bad Religion and The Offspring somehow fits the game perfectly, and it felt very weird to record this footage without it. And of course, the graphics are terrific. There is a large area of a fictional city to explore, including real-world locations which were removed in later ports. The excellent textures and decent polygon work zip by at a blazing 60 frames per second without issue, and really put the game over the top. Sadly, it seems arcade-style games like Crazy Taxi have fallen out of flavor as of late, but it's games like this that really define the Sega Dreamcast. Your energy will run out in 50 seconds. Charge and Blast is another port of a Sega arcade game, developed by AM2 no less. Sega of America actually passed on bringing this one to North America, and it arrived here via third-party publisher, Exacat. Like Crazy Taxi, the game's name describes the game perfectly. After selecting one of three characters, you charge up one of three weapons and then blast. The longer you let the weapon charge, the more devastating it will be. While locking onto targets and remembering to fire, you can also use the triggers to shift your character left and right. This is required to dodge incoming fire and attacks, and is where the bulk of the game's difficulty comes from. The game seems like it would be very simple to play, but I find the experience to be quite challenging. The highlight of Charge and Blast is easily the enemy design. If this isn't Godzilla, then I don't know what is. It leads me to believe the rest of the enemies and bosses were probably inspired by classic movie monsters as well. In any case, like many of Sega's arcade titles, the acting is of the B-movie variety, with very dry delivery despite the chaos and nonsense happening around the characters. Finally, the graphics are okay. The texture work isn't the best, but the smooth frame rate is a welcome addition, really helping cement the arcade feel. Overall, Charge and Blast is a bit basic, but if you happen to stumble upon it for cheap, it is worth a look. I'm not one for simulation sports games, but somehow ended up purchasing NBA 2K1 back when it came out. While the normal game mode didn't interest me much, I wasted dozens of hours playing the street mode. This mode offers the option to select from 2 to 5 players, but I always play 2 on 2 because NBA Jam. In hindsight, my longing for the jam would have been better served by NBA Showtime, but I didn't know any better. Revisiting NBA 2K1 for this video, the gameplay is alright. It's certainly not as over the top as an arcade offering, but there are still plenty of jams and as far as I can tell, no penalties. The controls are responsive with the analog stick and despite being based on a simulation, delivers a very accessible game of 2 on 2 basketball. There are also four different real world parks to choose from. Now, I'm not a basketball aficionado by any stretch, but I can imagine this was cool for fans of the sport. Graphically, I find NBA 2K1 rather appealing. The models look good for the time and the animations are nice and smooth thanks in part to the flawless frame rate. Being a vintage sports games, NBA 2K1 goes for next to nothing. If you happen to spot one and want to play a more realistic representation of street basketball, give this one a try.
Rip and Riders comes to us from Web Systems, who also developed Cool Borders 1 and 2 on the original PlayStation. Sony then moved the Cool Borders series to an internal studio. So rather than this being Cool Borders 3, it's Rip and Riders, at least in North America. Anyway, fans of the original Cool Borders should feel right at home with this installment. The meat of the game is an arcade-style checkpoint racer, which is exactly how I like my snowboard games. The controls also lean in the arcade direction, rather than simulation, though I feel like making tight turns slows the game down a bit more than it should. The environments are really the star of the show, and Rippin' Riders does a great job taking you through a multitude of fantasy environments you'd never dream of snowboarding through. And of course, the graphics give an excellent sensation of speed, with the exotic locale zipping by at 60 frames per second. Still, Rippin' Riders definitely feels like a first-generation Dreamcast game with simple geometry, but the sharp textures and smooth frame rate really do help to give that signature Dreamcast look. I have yet to really dive into this one like I have Cool Borders 2 on the PlayStation, but from what I've played so far, this seems like a solid effort. Last but not least is Soul Calibur from Namco. Along with Sonic Adventure, this was a killer app during the Dreamcast's launch. In many ways, Soul Calibur on the Dreamcast showed the home game consoles had finally bridged the gap with the arcades. In its day, this was easily the best looking home console game available. The character models are very detailed, and the fluidity of the animation still looks rather impressive to this day. Little touches like the way cloth and hair will sway as the character moves around the screen seemed realistic at the time. As for the gameplay, well, I'm certainly not an expert at fighting games and can only offer my thoughts from a perspective of a novice. What I like about the game most is the pace. This isn't a hyper-fast fighter in the vein of something like Marvel vs. Capcom, and I find it easy to keep up with the action. Controls are responsive and make sense, with a variety of kicks, punches, and of course weapon attacks available high and low. This makes it logical to block incoming attacks as well. I'm sure the controls and gameplay mechanics go much deeper than this, but as a novice I find the game exceptionally accessible and very fun to play. <laughs> And there you have it, 5 Dreamcast games that raised the console bar, with high-res graphics running at 60 frames per second. Now, this is not a definitive list, nor is it intended to be a best of, and the Dreamcast has far more than 5 smooth games, so be sure to leave a comment and let me know which 60 FPS Dreamcast games you enjoy.